Hi, I'm Pastor Steve Talmadge with Love of Christ Lutheran Church in Mesa, Arizona. And I want to have us take a look at the gospel reading for this coming Sunday, July 5th, 2020. Matthew 11, 16 through 19 and verses 25 to 30. I invite you to have your Bible so you can read through the passages as I uh, annotate and, and offer some insights. Let's pray together. Gracious God, give us the wisdom that uh, Jesus promises us and to hear the good news and the invitation to trust him, to learn from him, and to receive the gift of rest for our souls. In Jesus' name, amen. Matthew chapter 11. For the last three weeks, we've been looking at Matthew chapter 10, the commissioning of the 12 disciples being sent out to the villages and synagogues in the areas that Jesus is seeking to spread the good news of God's breaking in of the kingdom of God, the will and reign of God uh, happening in the here and now. And here we shift from the 12 disciples being sent out to Jesus preparing to teach the crowds. At the beginning of chapter 11, we have John the Baptist being reported to be in prison. And John sends disciples of his, students of his, to go and investigate and ask the question if Jesus actually is the one that we have been waiting for, the Messiah. And even though John baptized Jesus, there must be some question or doubt going on whether or not Jesus is actually doing what everyone thought. And as we know later on, many people thought he would be like a new King David or he'd be a military political wizard and, uh, and, uh, and set the people free from uh, Roman domination and set people free from the power structures that held them down. As these disciples come and ask Jesus what's going on, uh, Jesus tells them to go back to John and to report what they hear and what they have seen. He says that, uh, let, them, let them report that the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. This really is the mission of Jesus, and it's reiterated in Luke chapter 4 as well. Then in verses 7 to 15, preceding our gospel for this week, Jesus questions the crowds. Why? Why did you all rush out to hear John the Baptist if you're questioning whether or not he was a prophet from God? What were you really looking for? At the end of this uh, little section on questioning the crowds, Jesus sets the table for his teaching by, in verse 15, saying, Let anyone with ears listen. A question. What makes it hard for you? to listen to Jesus. In verses 16 through 19, which is the first part of our gospel reading, Jesus speaks of comparing the generation of people in which and to which he is ministering with special attention to the religious leaders of his day, which was dominated by the Pharisees. They are like children who are either deaf or distracted to listen to the message of both. John the Baptist and Jesus. The leaders criticize and label John as one who is demon possessed and Jesus is labeled as one who is a glutton and a drunkard and who's a friend to the wrong kind of people. During this time of disruption from COVID-19 and the social and economic unrest swirling about us, how are you finding a way to not be distracted from the teachings of Jesus. At the end of verse 19, you hear Jesus say these words, yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. This quote indicates that wisdom is not something that we store in our brains. We go to school and get degrees and pile a, a, a bunch of information into our heads. But wisdom is most fully expressed in the way we love our neighbor. A question, why do you think some find it so hard to practice the wisdom of modern science when it comes to wearing a mask? washing one's hands, and practicing social phys physical distancing. 
another trivia question, but you're going to have to find the answer for yourself is, why do you think both the Hebrew Bible, particularly the book of Proverbs, and Greek literature, Sophia, portray wisdom as a female? Iona College assistant professor Jennifer Collund writes, the gospel of Matthew is often referred to as the teacher's gospel. Throughout the gospel, Jesus is teaching. There's an emphasis on his teaching ministry. He leaves his disciples with the directive to go out into the world and teach all nations. For them to teach others, they must first understand. Teaching facilitates truth becoming wisdom. Teaching reveals who Jesus really is. In your life, who has taught you most about who Jesus really is? The best teachers in life are those who understand the material they seek to teach. Wisdom clarifies our vision. When Jesus declares that wisdom is vindicated by her deeds, he is lifting up an important aspect of his Jewish heritage, the wisdom tradition. You know, the books of Proverbs, the Psalms, the book of Job, Ecclesiastes. Wisdom grants us the ability to understand beyond our sensory perception. If wisdom is vindicated by her deeds, what are her deeds? So looking to the Hebrew scriptures, we see wisdom provides order to chaos in Proverbs 8. She grants us humility in Proverbs 11. She protects and guards us in Psalm 4. Wisdom is a life-giving gift that comes with the Lord's favor. According to the book of James in the New Testament, Godly wisdom is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy, good gifts, good fruits, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. That's James 3, 7. The results of wisdom are evident. So in your life, who in your life has taught you wisdom. On the contrary, those who lack wisdom are fools. Fools are often considered playful. And so Jesus, comparing this generation to children playing in the marketplace, highlights their lack of understanding. Wisdom must be sought. It's given to those who seek it. The verb implies the need to act. Though wisdom is often associated with advanced age and intellect, Jesus's prayer makes clear that this generation, this generalization is not correct. The hidden things have been revealed to infants, the ones we would consider least likely to understand. Therefore, revelation is a vital ingredient. Revelation is an unfolding of truth. Truth is not always readily apparent. Therefore, Jesus is unveiling is necessary for people to know him and to know God. There is a dependency on Jesus to help us understand who God is and whose we are. Wisdom beacons all to a feast she has prepared and warns against foolishness. She calls out in Proverbs uh, chapter 9 verses 5 and 6, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine that I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. However, there is a cautionary tale because just as wisdom calls, us out, calls out to us, so too does foolishness. We must choose. There are consequences for the choice we make. Jesus, likewise, extends an invitation when he tells the weary to come. Jesus offers the crowd respite. Respite for the weary, but we may miss here, what, what we may miss here is that Jesus is also highlighting the importance of instruction. Though we think of the yoke as equipment for an animal, the term was often used 
for in rabbinic literature to refer to the task of obeying the Torah, the law. In order to obey the law, you must know the law. Jesus wants those who are burdened, burdened by their ignorance, burdened by the interpretation of law that has buried them with all sorts of guilt and shame. He wants those who are burdened to learn from him. Jesus's gentle instruction will enable you to find rest for your soul, to find wholeness and completion. Instructors are guides and Jesus's guidance is not harsh or arrogant. And therefore obedience to the word should be easy. Jesus's invitation is instructive. Wisdom enables self reflection. Getting to know Jesus helps us to know ourselves better. Our pursuit of following Jesus is at the same time a pursuit of wisdom. So I end with two questions. What is it about the yoke of Jesus's interpretation of the law that is easy and makes his burden light? We teach that in and through Jesus, God justifies us, God accepts us, God declares us right without needing to be perfect. And he promises us to accompany us on this journey called life. How might that be a yoke worth taking? Enlighten the burden of proving ourselves over and over again. God bless you as you go into this week, as you come into the weekend of celebrating the 4th of July, and as we gather for worship in whatever form it might take. May we receive the gift of wisdom from Jesus and the yoke that is light and easy. God bless you.